quick video showing yet more scriptures that explicitly refute this Gnostic Calvinist heresy of theistic determinism, the man-centered, man-made, man-exalting, man-glorifying false doctrine and Gnostic heresy of theistic determinism. It is utterly inconsistent with the totality of scripture. I've shown that in other videos and I got more verses further proving that point. So let's get right into it, because the God-centered doctrine of free will is taught all throughout the Word of God, and the man-centered, man-made, man-exalting, humanistic, Gnostic, Calvinist heresy of theistic determinism is based on taking verses out of context and ignoring the totality of Scripture. So let's get right into the verses. Uh, so we're, we're going to see here that not all men do the will of God, plain and simple. Luke 7, verse 29, down to verse 31. And all the people that heard him, and the publicans justified God, being baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized of him. And the Lord said, Whereunto then shall I make liken the men of this generation, and to what are they like? Notice that. You know, they're doing it to themselves. They got no one to blame but themselves. Plain and simple. And they're rejecting his counsel, and God is grieved over it. Why doesn't God just irresistibly decree, uh, irresistibly, unchangeably decree them to accept it? Why? Because it's their free will of choice to, re to reject it, and God is rightfully holding them accountable. That's the God-centered doctrine of free will, not the man-centered doctrine of theistic determinism. Uh, Matthew chapter 23, verse 37 to 39. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate, for I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Again, it's their choice. Ye would not. See, it's, it's, it's offered to them, and they're rejecting it. They're not doing his will, and he's lamenting over it. Again, why is God lamenting over something that he just already irresistibly, you know, unchangeably, eternally decreed? You know, saying it's God's secret will doesn't change the fact, because you have a secret will that is the exact opposite of his revealed will. You know? So it doesn't make sense, because of the fact that they're trying to make this, this, uh, these verses fit in with their Gnostic heresy, and they're, they're unable to do so. These verses refute theistic determinism. Again, uh, further elaborating on that point, Luke 13, verse 34 to 35, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which, which killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together as a hen doth gather, grew brood under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate, and verily I say unto you, you shall not see me until the time come when ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Again, you see that it's their choice, and God's lamenting, because they're not doing his will. Acts 7, verse 51 and 53. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. There goes your irresistible grace. Uh, which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they that have slain them, which showed before of the coming of the just one, in whom, sorry, of whom ye have been now been, uh, sorry, ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. Again, they're held accountable. They're blamed for their own choices. They're not doing the will of God. They're resisting. They're actively going against the grace of God, the Holy Ghost. Plain and simple. Not all men do the will of God. That is the God-centered doctrine of free will. And God is rightfully holding them accountable. They're being rightfully condemned because they're not doing the will of God. The man-centered doctrine of theistic determinism, basically they could just reply, well, God preordained me to do it. I could not have done otherwise. You know, that's what it really comes down to. And that's the logical conclusion Calvinists are unable to deal with. That if you have no free will to act otherwise, then logically speaking, God is the author of your sin. You know, you did it and somehow you still have personal accountability, you know, which is just an oxymoron. It's a, it's a, it's cognitive dissonance, plain and simple. Uh, the fact that they could have acted otherwise, I mean, why rebuke them if they couldn't, if they were, had no ability to act otherwise? Rebuke presupposes the ability to act contrary. You know, it's God-centered because God is rightfully holding them accountable. They chose, and they have no one to blame but themselves. God is completely exonerated. But in the man-centered doctrine, the man-centered Calvinist Gnostic heresy of, of theistic determinism, uh, ultimately God is the one to blame for your sins. This is the logical conclusion they cannot handle. They refuse to deal with, plain and simple. And saying it's God's secret will, it doesn't change the fact. Because all it does is just add to the problem. Because you can't really trust anything God says. If he has a secret will for you to sin, even though publicly he, he says to not do so. 
So yet more scripture is refuting the man-centered, man-made, Gnostic, Calvinist heresy of theistic determinism. Don't be deceived by Calvinism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.